for one magical night during the most recent Te Tairawhiti Arts Festival, Manutahi Hill in Ruatoria came to life with Te Aro Patu Paiarehe. I work in the community aspiration space, so I spend a lot of time communicating with locals about what their hopes and dreams are for the community that we live in, and that's along the coast. But for Ruatoria, it's about having spaces that we can engage with our families. Um, we do a challenge called the Tsitsirangi Challenge. It's a Gisborne challenge traditionally, but we've adapted it to um, our maunga, which is Manutahi Hill. During the challenge, participants climb Manutahi Hill 68 times, equal to summiting Mount Everest. And it was on one of these walks that Winia came up with the idea of creating Te Arapatu Paiarehe, recognising the legendary fairy folk of the forest to motivate and challenge participants. Lots of us that do it are mamas, and so that means that we were taking our children up on what could be quite difficult long walks. And um, I kind of just thought it would be an opportunity to enhance our natural environment, create a space that would be engaging and interesting for our children, and ultimately make it easier for our mamas to get the exercise we need to get up the hill. The exhibition was a collaboration between students and teachers of Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Te Waiu Nga Te Paro, Hoya Gallery, Te Tairawhiti Arts Festival and Ngāti Parau Whānui Trust who own the hill. Our brief really was to create some fairy doors, really just a kuaha, a maitea, ao turehu o te ao wairua, um, ki te ao tūturu. So from the spiritual world um, to um, the physical world. They've all looked at different kaupapa and we try to encourage them to look at the elements, to look at our atua, to look at our things that come from I the tile yeah, and, and cool. also incorporate Māori design um, into, their mo into their fairy doors so that they're quite unique. Principal Philip Heaney was also eager to get on board with the kaupapa. One of, one of our queer, um, Queenie Moiho, um, she's been one who's always, I guess, um, composed songs, composed items about the patupaiarehe. So when we heard um, that they were going to do a display, there's going to be a display taking place um, involving um, her stories, um, we were only too willing to get in behind her and, and help her bring the stories to, to life um, through our students' artwork and our staff's artwork. Conceptually, the thing that really, um, I guess, interests me is where people can come up with ideas and go through process by which the, the ideas are uh, brought to fruition. All hands were on deck to get it done. Students and staff using new technology to bring the project to life. The students are uh, reflections of their, of their teachers. And, um, and so we, we sort of got um, two, two art teachers here um, who have um, you know, come to groups with our new technology, which we've been using, the laser cutter, um, to create the artworks. So it's given, um, I guess, another avenue for the creativity of staff and students um, you know, in which they can do things that they otherwise couldn't, couldn't have done in other mediums. The creative process started with students researching Māori arts forms such as whakairo, tāmoko, taniko and tukutuku. From there, one of the school founders was able to shed light on the significance of patupaiarehe. We had Nani Moiho come in to record it all. The first part of record it all was about Niwareka and Matora and how Niwareka was part Turehu and Matora was human. And so we have, you know, that whakapapa, that connection. We practically won. And so, so the kids understand more about that relationship. But also, she went on to talk about the other, um, the history of Patupaiere here. Um, and this little here, which we're quite well known for. The students also drew inspiration from Whare Nui and Pari in the Marae. Once their drawings were complete, they used Adobe Illustrator to make the pictures digital. The kids were able to digitise their pictures, just finding them the easiest way, trying to connect shapes, and they learnt that process. And from there, we were able to create a cut file. The cut file goes to the laser cutter, and then we're able to import it into the laser cutter and just cut each layer. So we had to teach um, the kids 
about layers and how the layers work. You know, you've got a base layer that holds everything together, and then on top you can have a, uh, a series of other layers, which I found it a bit hard to understand at first until we did an example wood cut, and they got more of an idea of how, you know, it's supposed to look and how it's going to be constructed at the, in the end. And, um, yeah, this is um, a nei ngā hua o, o era mahi. Ko te whakamāruma o tēnei, uh, ko Māui, te mokomoko, e ruana ki ngā kūha o Henenui te pō. Ko tēnei takitanga, um, ko te whakamāruma mō takitanga, uh, e whakātu ana i te wānui ātāne, um, he ruru tēnei, i te mea ko, o, ki ai nei ko te ira te kaitiaki o takumarai a te awera. It was a lengthy but ultimately rewarding process for those involved. Te kite i ngā, i ngā, um, i ngā hua o ngā mahi o ngā tauira katoa. Ko take tino mea ko te um, tā i runga i te rorohiko, um, kia nga te mea ko tae au te ako me pēhea te whakamai i te pū manawa illustrator. My personal ultimate um, aspiration for this project is that our people would feel worthy of the investment, that um, we can absolutely have arts and we can have arts festivals and we will celebrate and it will be well attended and that we can have high calibre arts in a place like Ruatoria and that our isolation isn't always a barrier. The event was attended by over 600 people throughout the night and was funded by Te Pone Kōkere, Toi Tū Tairawhiti, Sport Gisborne Tairawhiti and Trust Tairawhiti. Renee Lola here, Local Focus.